Mike McGlinchey signs a five-year, $87.5 million contract with $50 million guaranteed, which uh, I'd say is one of the rare stories that shocks you and doesn't surprise you at the same exact time. I think we all expected him to get a lot of money, but you still have to see it to believe it. And um, him and Russell Wilson now, John, this will be the man <laughs> protecting Russell Wilson. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm i not shocked at all because it was clear that the numbers were going to be high. It, it was clear that he was going to get a lot of money. It's why guys want to hit free agency because you have multiple people bidding on your services, which drives up the price. So, yeah, we're going to make fun of it because it seems insane. And under no circumstances could the 49ers have done this, should have done this, and they did the right thing by never extending him. I, I even pushed back against the fifth-year option, but he did start the last two years on a team that, you know, <laughs> were plays away. I guess this year they weren't plays away, but, I mean, back-to-back -back NFC Championship games. So he he has value as a player. And this, I would say this, they – Sean Payton is okaying this deal, right? This isn't right. like, you know, General Patton, he just wants, no, this is, Sean Payton wants Mike McGlinchey as a starting right tackle. And part of it is like good players don't usually hit free agency at, at major positions. Now, they, and they don't have picks, right? That's the other thing. You got to overpay when you've traded these picks away for Russell Wilson. I, I'm just, I, I couldn't get behind it. And, and I think sometimes when you're closer to the sun, it's a little brighter on us that watch every snap that obviously these guys evaluated it, but their perspective and they'll give a press conference and I'm sure, and you know, obviously it won't happen today because it's not even official, but like by the end of the week, I bet Sean Payton talks about durability, toughness. He just gives us something we don't have to worry about. Like there is value in things that he brings to the table. And then you just naturally pay like, you know, there's a reason shitty homes in Malibu that look at the water cost more than like Stockton. You know, <laughs> there's a reason in Paradise Valley down the street from me, a fucking home that JJ Watts sitting in costs more than living in Phoenix and the tackles cost more than linebackers or safeties or tight ends. Like it's just, so the nature of his position, he does bring positive things that coaches value that you, me and people listening to this right now and 49er fans are just, going to see an average athlete who gets smoked by speed. Yeah, playing with a quarterback who doesn't get rid of the football right now. Like, Sean Payton is coming from one of the fastest release times in NFL history, probably, and Drew Brees, right? One of the fastest guys from snap to decision to throw to a guy in Russell that feels like he's not seeing it at all, you know? So is he planning to run the ball a ton and take the ball out of Russ's hands a little bit? Maybe, right? That would... Like, I do wonder, does it give us any insight as to how he's playing to play? Or did he just think this is the best right tackle I can afford? And so we are going to be better at this position, even if it costs me a lot of money. Maybe it's that simple. I just have to be a little better at that position and it's going to cost me money. But, you know, now the Niners need a right tackle. Because to your point. Well, we knew that, right? We did know that. But he played a lot of football for them. Now, was it a failed pick? This is a guy who started a bunch of games for a team that won a bunch of games. Colton Miller got drafted several picks later. I'd forgotten because of the coin flip that Colton Miller didn't get drafted right after Mike McGlinchey because the Raiders, from what I heard from a Raiders coach that you and I both know, the Raiders liked McGlinchey. The Raiders would have taken McGlinchey. The Niners took him, so then they trade back with Arizona. That's where Josh Rosen goes. And then they get Colton Miller several picks later. And Colton Miller has turned into one of the best right tackles in the NFL. The, so, the, the coin flips an all-time Gruden, John Lynch moment. <laughs> Gruden storms off. <laughs> he was just Shanahan, when they won a Super Bowl. Yeah. Classic Shanahan, not there. <laughs> no show. Yeah. Uh, it was a classic. Wasn't Rod Woodson the one doing the coin flip? Uh, I think like so. The honorary I think so. I think guy? So, that was yeah. the other part of it. it was Rod was there. So. Now, one thing you would say, remember, it's easy to forget this. The Niners, McGlinchey was better right away than Colton Miller was, right? Well, wasn't the knock on Colton, and listen, I crushed him early on, was he was like a, a lighter, more of a project who has developed into a very, very solid left tackle. Now at left tackle, yes, thank you. Now at left tackle. But he he was, had to put on some weight, 
he's a much better athlete, you know, and, and I think the knock on average to below average tackles, you are going to be at a disadvantage because so many teams just, it's not even the high end teams have like a Bosa Parsons, a, you know, a Redick. You get like, you play the Jags. I mean, they got dudes they've drafted over the years, right? Like Josh Allen, you, you play, fuck the Giants. They got cave on. I mean, every team now has pretty formidable edge rushers that are all fast. So I think you see that with McGlinchey is he's just an average athlete and that's hard. And when you factor in, I, I think there's a point like it's, it's very, very difficult when you're not an elite athlete at six foot nine to get low enough with these guys that, you know, so many guys can like when Bosa or Vaughn Miller or Michael Parsons, when they're turning the head, think how low they are. And McGlinchey is, he's like a power forward. So it's very difficult. Like what makes Trent so special is yeah, he's big six, six or whatever, but he's also even at his age, an elite fluid athlete that can bend and move. And you see that with Lane Johnson. You just see that with the really good tackles is you got to be able to do that. And that's where context in this argument matters, right? Like McGlinchey and Kinlaw are not the same, but neither guy is getting a second contract with the 49ers. So anytime that you draft a guy, you could argue in the first round, but I would say the top 15 picks McGlinchey was nine. Kinlaw was 14. When you pull the trigger on that pick, you are hoping he is a multiple contract in the NFL. Like, you know, eight years in the NFL is probably like 14 in the NBA. Like that, he's going to be a stalwart on your team for, you know, the prime of his career. Right. And that's where you have to say it's a whiff. Cause when they draft McGlinchey nine, they have to be, this guy's going to be good enough to be one of our core guys. That's why this is not, it's one thing to let Hargrave Steelers draft a guy, you know, not in the first round, Third depend round. on how your cap works. You don't have the money. I, I bet they would have like, look back God, we probably would have liked to keep him looking back. Maybe they underestimated yeah. how good he could become, which happens. That would be the difference. Like ultimately I think what people would on the Philly would tell you is we love the guy and he was even better than we expected. I have a hard time seeing McGlinchey like is a ceiling like, did he peak a couple years ago? And this is just who he is. How does he ever be like, you know, McGlinchey made that pro bowl, not like a fake pro bowl, but like was one of the better right tackles in the league. I have a hard time seeing that though. He's paid like one. But I think what you said to start the point is, is, is the right point. Like Kinlaw and McGlinchey are not equal, even though you would probably do them both over. You would do the McGlinchey one over and take Colton Miller. You would if you did the Kinlaw one over, I don't know who you would draft. There wasn't another defensive tackle in the realm of that range, right? In terms of being another first round guy, there wasn't anybody really close. I'd have to go back and look. I don't know if there was another elite defensive tackle in the whole draft. I, honestly, what you probably do is I don't just, think there was. You just take Ayuk there and you take another position a little later. All right. I mean, Justin Jefferson, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, if we're redoing I mean, the If you whole could thing. do it over again, you take Justin Jefferson. But if we were redoing the draft, Justin Jefferson would never be there. Yeah. Uh only you get to redo the draft. So you're like it's like back to the future. Only you know. Again, he's like, a solid player. You might take an offensive lineman with that pick. But yeah, I I, I think one thing that hurts his value is he's when he's missed game, it doesn't feel like they skip a beat. Now they've won games when Trent's been out. They've won games when Joe Staley's been out. Doesn't mean they can't win, but obviously, like you can't sustain without Trent. I, I think it's very easy to. It's McGlinchey's much more of a replaceable player. Like the 49ers well, have they, some irreplaceable players, right? Like what Kittle brings to the table, what Bosa brings to the table, what Trent brings to the table, what Fred brings to the table. McGlinchey just doesn't fall under that. It's why that they probably figured out maybe a, you know when they picked up the fifth year option more. Off more likely than not, he was never going to be the long term solution. Yeah, but they also understood the market that it was going to be hard for them to upgrade at that position. Well, what they would tell you probably is right. They paid him ten eight this year on his fifth year option. Look at what his actual his worst is worth. You know, like that's what he just got. So we yeah. go listen. It was a short term fix. In fairness, he knew it. He was always very open about it. Uh, but 
we got a bargain. Yeah. You, I was where I was wrong is I said, I would never have picked up the fifth year option. It worked out pretty well. But if they had, a, if they had a limitless amount of cap space, they wouldn't have resigned them for $50 million guaranteed. No chance. They were ready to move on. Well, cause, cause based on being this close to the sun being, he's not worth that, right? He's worth more to someone else than he is to you. Right. Even though clearly they, John and Kyle like this guy a lot. I I remember John talked about him either at the end of the year press conference or maybe at the combine. And and I think maybe it was with like Papa. He, they always got a little offended because everyone shits on him that he's better than just the one clip a week that goes viral. And that is, there's some fairness there. It's just hard to like, that's his low point. You know, it can get someone killed. Because that that position is just on a weekly basis. I mean, next year they play the NFC East again, right? So they're getting Redick. They're getting Micah Parsons. You know, let's just, you know, we'll see. You know, Joe Staley thinks he's a flash player, and he's right. <laughs> but maybe Kayvon's a little better, right? The, the, the commanders have, they just paid a defensive tackle a ton of money, and they got Chase Young coming back, so they got fucking firepower. Deron Payne just became the highest paid tackle other than Aaron Donald in NFL history. Would he get guaranteed 60? Yeah, 60. Younger, a lot younger in Hargrave. Uh, yeah, I mean, he was the 13th pick in the 2018 draft. He was drafted after McGlinchey. If you could do it over, you take Payne there, and then you take Worfs instead of Kinlaw. No, McGlinchey, was McGlinchey the 18 draft? Was he not? I don't have it in front of me if you're looking at it. Oh, no, no, oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, if you do it over again, you take Jerome Payne right there. 